I thought we were sitting down to discuss his uh, his issues from the past. Oh, dude, that's months. like a three hour set. We're doing a three hour set right now. I'm just kidding. What issues? That way. What, what issues? Well, well, Logan. Well, let's just. I mean, like, are let's you, dive into. Are you sober right now? George, you do realize that as a member of the show that you have the ability to say, I'm going to... You can say anything you want. Yeah, I'm going to cut that. Like, you can... Like, let's just have a conversation. What you don't like, we pull out. We just started the episode. Oh, it's, are we rolling? Oh, yes, no, we're rolling, yeah. Rolling. Oh, you know that. Yeah. Hey, welcome back to Impulse, the number one podcast in the world. Still not in our studio, because it's currently being shipped to Puerto Rico, where uh, we're building a new set. Yeah, we're going we're gonna, to uh, replace the panel on the window with a real window. Uh, <laughs> this is Howie Mandel's studio. Um, Howie, we, we love you. Thank you for letting us use your studio. This, uh, you know, I feel like it's haunted. If we could zoom into some of the stuff. Uh, it, it, it's, I, you know, I don't know how to say because we're using a studio, but like, I, I definitely would, if I got teleported here by myself, I definitely would have a lot of questions. I would want to know what's, like, it's, what is that thing right there? Is that like a, oh, this is how we should have opened the show. You know, those chickens? Yeah. Oh. Oh, I'm excited. If if you get annoyed easily, skip the next 30 seconds of this podcast. <laughs> Pretty great stuff. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Okay, so look, we haven't done a boys only podcast in a while. We have George back. Mike and I have been traveling all over Europe. I've been traveling all over everywhere else and uh, kind of just want to just just have a good old uh, impulsive chat with the boys like we used to back in the day. So I actually don't know anything that happened on your guys' trip. So I'm just as curious as you guys. So yeah. I'll be throwing out a lot of questions as well. I thought we were sitting down to discuss his uh, his issues. From the past. Oh, dude, that's months. like a three hour set. We're doing a three hour set right now. I'm just kidding. What issues? That way. What, what issues? Well, well, Logan, well, let's just, I mean, like, are, let's you, dive into are you sober right now? No. <laughs> so that's an issue, man. We haven't seen sober Logan since he was training for Mayweather. That, that guy sucks. Well, let's take, let's take, let's take this seriously. <laughs> Get him out of here. <laughs> let's take this seriously for a second. Right, what, sure. what, what do you, what is the like core reason? What benefits? Are you seeing out of this, uh, you know, party lifestyle that that Tommy in it pretty infamously called you out on? I thought having a, 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 a 18, 17, 17. A seventeen year old call you out would be the thing that made you change, but clearly it wasn't. Like, what do you what What's the benefit? What are you getting out of this right now? What's this? What's it doing for you? How's it getting your 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 willies off? Yeah, my my rocks rolling. Yeah, uh, you, you know that moment with Tommy was powerful when I had a seventeen year old look me in the face and tell me I needed to stop doing hard crack. <laughs> I can I, I considered it for one second, and then I realized I love hard crack, and I'll never stop. <laughs> but what what is it though? Like, because obviously this is a bit of a sensitive topic for me, and I, I want the audience to know that obviously we're oh why? Because you used to be a drug addict, I'm like yeah, we all fucking know, bro. We all know. Didn't you write a book about it or something? No, yeah. wait, hold on. I'm on your you side. Guys, my, you bad, guys, my bad. My bad. My bad. My bad. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. You guys done? Okay, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. We are coming to you as friends. Well, hold on. No, well, what's going on? What approach are we taking here? They're coming to me as enemies. Yes. Yeah. yeah fuck, you. fuck you, man. Hold them. I'll hit them. <laughs> no, but, but but like, well, I'm just no. I'm coming to you out of a point of curiosity. Sure. Like, what is it? Because clearly, all right. Let's sure. let's let's nail this down right off the bat. There's no issue. Like, we're making light of it because there's no issue. I mean, like, there there is a slight issue. Oh, Jeff's doing the one. I, of those. I've, been, I've been. No, there's slight. There's slightly an issue from my thing. trusted advisors. I've been getting there. There's there's potentially an issue. I'm here. Brewing. I, I've been. I've been it's hearing. It's making well, its way around. Well, not the camp. not not only as a result of what he's doing, but also as a result of what those substances are doing to his mindset. And so, I, so clearly, I've noticed as well a return to a some certain aspects of the Logan Paul character that I thought we had boxed up and, and coffined, and we could talk about that stuff. But like, f first and foremost, like, what is it that's driving you to uh, the the do you want to talk about this create creativity a little bit like sure. that angle? Sure. So, okay. so, and I also just want to clarify when, we, when we're talking about substances, you, you talk about three with me only. I, I was joking about hard crack. I don't even know if that's a thing. I don't because I don't do crack. I no, never it's have, it's a thing. I never can, done I cocaine. Can. Never will do anything up my nose. Is crack um, 
Oh, crack cocaine. See, I don't even know. Crack, it's not, it's, there's drugs. It's a purified form of, of cocaine, it, boys. Yeah. It takes all the adulterants out, makes the smoking experience uh, a little bit more effective for the end user. Okay, this is not smoking well, for dummies. Also, by the way, th enough. that drug, I'll just say right now, is is the drug that's like accidentally killing anyone, everyone, because uh, fentanyl is... No, that's heroin. Nope, nope, he's right. No, no, no. Actually, no, no, no. in Arizona right now, 11 yeah, yeah. people died okay. in their joints. They're putting, they're got putting it, that stuff in Got there. it, brother. I'm not talking about outliers. So people might <laughs> die of fentanyl-laced weed and potentially fentanyl-laced cocaine, but fentanyl-laced heroin is the problem. It does it does ha pop up in other drugs, but the majority of our people mistaking heroin for heroin. Regardless, it's look, bad. Look, I just want to make here's, sure we here's clarify what I'm, Here's the what I'm doing. Here's yeah. what I'm doing. Yes. Smoking, I'm drinking, and caffeine. And... um. You know, right now, uh, well, why I, I'm not sober right now, I took a, a painkiller because my hand was really hurting me. It, this is the first one I took. And, like, I, I, I know it was, I got drowsy and kind of, like, not super present. So now I got this Red Bull. And so that's if, you just, if you just mix your downers with your uppers, you can then do a podcast. <laughs> Like, no, stop. <laughs> Jeff did the cut that thing. But let me say this really quickly. That in the world outside of illicit substances is not that unheard of. There's a lot of people who... My fucking hand hurts. You know, I, I have to I'm a not talking to about do. that, but what I'm saying there's a lot of people out there who, you know, drink... A, Red Bull vodka is a popular drink for a reason. They get they get a great effect off the off the alcohol, and they get a pop back up from the from the Red Bull. And, they, and there's levels to it. I love you know? that drink. But, but, but um, why? Poor K, Logan Paul. I'm glad you asked, Mike, because I'd like to consider myself a semi-reasonable uh, person, in, you know, in some regards. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just say it. About 30-plus days ago, we sat on this podcast um, in Vegas, and I, and I mentioned I had this idea. And I said it's one of the greatest, most, in my opinion, brilliant things I've ever conceptualized. And um, it's kind of taken over me. It is, is completely consumed me in a way where I've, I've just never felt this creatively limitless with what I can do and um, having fun in a way where I'm not so uh, in my head, i.e., you know, smoking, kind of relaxing, uh, going out with my friends, drinking, just kind of being like a loose, like I'm just, I'm, I'm living and for the first time ever, my inspiration is coming from just being, which, which is unusual for me like as a creative and as most of the creatives in this room know there's usually some sort of like brainstorming process where you sit down and um come up with the thing that you're going to do next bro i'm a, i'm in a space in my life and in my head where i can just close my eyes and like ideas come to me and i've never ever felt like that and so i'm kind of leaning into this like Free spirited. It's called a flow state. Flo yeah. You're in a you're in a, a long lasting uh, uh, substance inspired flow state. Okay, so here's here's the issue. You are not the first artist. You are that. not the first artist in Los Angeles. You're not the first you know artist in the history of the past hundred years or so to be inspired through substance use. The question just becomes where's the line drawn? Now, when you're focusing simply on there, there's no safe uh, drug, alcohol and marijuana, marijuana maybe, but alcohol is no safer than a lot of other drugs. You can run into a lot of the same kind of issues that you can with any any other substance, right? But like you look, I, I my brain automatically goes back to Hendrix. It goes back to Morrison. It goes back to, you know, Sid Barrett from Pink Floyd in his early days. It goes back to, to Joplin and all of these people who relied heavily on substances to free themselves and create the craft and the art that they were known for creating. And all of those stories ended very fucking tragically. And, I, and, I'm, and, and I'm by no means saying that you're even close to being on the level of any of those people. They were shooting heroin and, and, and doing crazy things with their bodies. I take a couple shots every night. Every night. Yeah. Here's the thing. This is my point of view on it. <laughs> you, 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 your personality is this. Everything you do, you go 100%. Extremist. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, which is great. And that's why you have this, this empire that you've built, which is great. And, and I hope that you keep continuing to do that. But, but I'm a piece of shit. Not only that, <laughs> I'm noticing that you could get grumpy when you're not mm. intoxicated. And so what I'm saying is like you're already having small withdrawals throughout the day. Yeah, I know. And that is that's kind of worrying me because like 
I know you're an addictive, you have an addictive personality. So what happens when you're done with this project? Are you going to lose yourself to this shit that you're doing for this one no, project? No, no, that's the other thing about me. I'm a, I'm a lunatic and like I can cut stuff cold turkey. So when do me and him step in and say, okay, you're done? November 29th. And then we have the right to be like, okay, you're done with this shit. Yeah. November 29th. November, November 30th. Okay, fine. I'll, and give then you, I'll give you fucking to the end of the year. I don't even give a fuck. Well, well, but there well, needs well. to be a day where I'll, I have to step in and be like, okay, enough of this shit, bro. I, I, can I be honest with you? Yeah. I respect what you both are doing right now, but you're not going to need to step in. I do feel like he would. I think he. I think he is the type of dude that would be able to stop it. I really it's, do believe. It's all in I do. It's, it's but like I just want to make it hundred or zero. I also want to. I also want to level set one more time back to what you said in the beginning in the introduction to this conversation. Like, I've been with him for the majority of this uh, creative overload, and with the exception of one bone shattering event, the rest of it. <laughs> The rest of it <laughs> happened very much within reason. He's not fucking super intoxicated. He's not shaking in the morning. He's not ripping shots at noon for the most part. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is this. As a, as a monitor and someone who considers himself, you know, the, the warning signs are there. And so I, that's why I'm happy we're having the conversation. If he's telling us November 29th, let's fucking hold him to 30th. it. 30th. November 30th. Yep. But if you start to slide there, killer, it's going to be sooner. But what do you, what also, like, can I ask, like, what is, what are you, you're, you're telling me I need to sober, be sober November 30th? Like, what's the thing? Or is it like slow down? No, no, no. It's just slow down. Can bro. I still have fun I, on I, the weekends? Of course, bro. It just has moderation, How much fun? bro. Like, you have no moderation right now. It's just either high or low. Like, and it's just like a lot of it right now, which I get. It's, I know you're it, leaning in you for the creative it, part of it. It's so fun, bro. No, no shit. It's Nobody's so, I'm, like, I'm having so much fun. Stop. I'm having so but, much fun. But, dude. By the way, this, conver <laughs> this conversation is going to affect a lot of people in the audience who are looking back at themselves while, listen to the, while listening to this and saying like, yo, am I overdoing it? You know what I'm saying? And like, normally he has restraints on his partying that are, yo, I have a fight coming up. Yo, I have vlogs due. Yo, I have business that I have to attend to. He currently is just lost once again in the fog that is that project. And and I think to his point, once that project stops, you know, he's gonna get back into shape for whatever he's gonna do next. So I, it's, it's I, I love the analogy, but it's not fog. It's the most like the clear sighted vision yeah. and beautiful like mountainous landscape. And I'm just trying to sprint up it while drunk. Anyways. Can I, well, last well, thing, I, I've always been the kind of person that says whatever works for you, different different uh, strokes, strokes for different, different folks. folks. And so listen, if it's working for you, and, and I think at the end of the day, it always comes down to uh, uh, the pitfalls versus the benefits. If you're seeing the, the benefits outweigh the pitfalls and the only pitfall is one bone shattering event <laughs> that we should talk about. Yeah or no? <laughs> So so one one day I'll tell the story. Uh, today's not that day. Got it. I'm just I'm just not there yet. Did you I, talk about the pictures that are on your cast? Yeah. So everyone wants to sign cast, and, you know. But I that I think that's lame. So I, my demand is that you draw a picture. Sick. And so I I got some cool pictures on here. Uh, you know, a lot of people wishing me a speed of recovery. Look. We're all adults here, and some of us choose to use nicotine to relax, focus, or just unwind after a long day. Lucy Nicotine is a company that was created to help nicotine users find a cleaner option and feel better about the ways they consume nicotine. Their latest product is Slim Nicotine Pouches, which contain pure synthetic nicotine and provide the same satisfaction that nicotine users expect without any tobacco at all. Lucy Slim Pouches use the newest technology for synthesizing pure nicotine in the lab. None of the tobacco, all of the nicotine satisfaction in Lucy Slim Pouches include both coconut oil and gum to provide a soft, fluffy texture that enhances the flavor and doesn't dry out your mouth. They come in three strengths, four, eight, and 12 milligrams in three exclusive and delicious flavors, spearmint, mango, and cool cider. It's 2021. Don't compromise when you're choosing your nicotine products to so go with the newest tobacco-free options from Lucy Impulsive Listeners. Go to lucy.co and use the promo code LOGAN to get 20% 20, 20 off your order of Lucy Slim Pouches or any other Lucy products. That's lucy.co and use the promo code LOGAN at checkout. Also, I do have to give this disclaimer. Warning, this product contains non-tobacco nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. Back to the program. Things happen when you're in Germany. So things happen when we were there. Do, should we do a little uh, a debrief? about? What is your favorite moment when you guys are on the trip? That you guys didn't invite me to, by the way. I just want to throw that out there. It, it, I'm just kidding. They did. Uh, yeah. <laughs> by the way, on, on that note, like this travel is, is grueling. You know what I'm saying? It's it, work, it does, Michael. It, it's work in itself, and it does a number on you. And if you're someone who has to create content, someone that's working on stand-up, which, by the way, I'd love to hear what you've been doing for the past couple weeks as well. It could it could do a fucking number on you. And and I, you no, know, the only reason I didn't go is because I dead ass was sick, and I was like, if I take this trip, I'm not recovering. Like there's lit no way. Literally, it, it fucks you up, dude. 
It does. Fuck me up. Especially at the rate that we like, we're not going on these trips and ending up in countries for five, six days at yeah. a time. We're going. We're 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 in Berlin for twenty four hours, yeah. twelve hours at a time, <laughs> and then it's on to the next spot. So I don't know. What do you want? My, my favorite. My favorite thing was was definitely in Iceland. There is some moment in Iceland, most beautiful country I've ever seen in my life. I said that. I know I said this on the the last podcast, but. I've just never seen anything like that before. I, I wish Ever. you were. Th I wish you were there, Georgie, because I felt like God was with us on that trip, or like the Creator, you know, the universe, like like. Yeah, when you see something so beautiful that you know somebody had to create it. Well, yeah. it, it was like yeah. what we were chasing that day. Everything that we wanted, like weird, like universal, like the the weather would open up right when we need. It rains all the time there. Yeah. The, the sun would peek through the clouds at the perfect yeah. moment, and and it, it was just the most amazing, uh, like dreamscape of an environment. Um, personally of, of all the things we did i know uh you know it happened in hamburg but like dude germany's germany's wild yeah can we talk about the red light district can, yeah wait can i ask I, you a I question can, about sure, germany sure, sure. i don't know if this is a, a like a fairy tale or whatever but is it true that there's no speed limits you could just do whatever you want certain I, areas of the autobahn that's, on, really? the, that's yeah. on the autobahn yeah so when you get outside of uh like like would it be david like city limits like you get 20 yeah. 30 miles outside of the city to the more opened up areas the the speed limit dissipates or disappears completely right so the Whoa. signs are denoted by these gray stripes and and from what i've always heard and understood about the autobahn is there's actually far less accidents there yeah. than other places on the planet which is crazy but i can imagine also that when an accident does occur no one's pushing you because you're, you're going to smoke gas they don't go that's what he was anyway. saying david david said the europeans uh monitor their rpm and their speeds because of the cost of gas out there which i'm just learning right now first of all in the uk you can't get gas there's a gas shortage in the UK, so you actually can't even get gas right, right now there. And some people have been telling me that in places like Sweden and and, and uh, those Norwegian areas that uh, gas can be as much as $25, $30 a gallon, Jeez. which is mind-blowing. So they're very caution, uh, cautious about how they speed. But um, red light district. Yeah, it's a, so I, it's, a what is that? it's a place in Germany mm -hmm. where I, I can't believe this is a real thing. I walked in, I was like, this is this is. Well, welcome to Germany, uh, bro. It's a it's a street where there are no women allowed, and uh, so no women allowed, and you have to be over eighteen if you are a man, and you you basically browse on this street like a, an outdoor shopping mall, and in the window are women that you can purchase sexual favors from. <laughs> I'm talking prostitution commercialized, very commercialized, and very legal. Semi so they're just standing like mannequins, not standing. Cat calling you, big boy. <laughs> hey, daddy, looking good tonight. Go, except in a German accent. And more creative than that. They're <laughs> not, creative. yeah, they're not. So, <laughs> they're good, they're just, good. They hook you, dude. They hook you paint, Mike. Could you paint more of a picture for me? Like, yeah, yeah. So, so, so just to back up a couple of steps, the red, red light district. So, wait, wait, just, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to Prostitution go, go, go. is legal completely. Y yes. Y yes, but it's, but those areas aren't always governed by, by the police. And so, from what I understood from, from, be because, but from what I was told by Jesus and his crew, and we should get into who Jesus is and, and that in a second, was that uh, the police offload the responsibilities in those areas because they don't want to be there. They don't want to be policing those zones on foot because of what happens there. So, oh, like, it's, it's, is it the hood? It's not the hood. Let, back, back up one second. Red, red light districts exist in many other places besides just Germany. One, you know, the, the most infamous one is, is, in, is in Amsterdam, right? And, and in the Netherlands and throughout different areas. We went to a very famous one in, in Hamburg called, uh, that's just off something called the Raperbahn, which one, is. One more time. The Raperbahn. Ri okay. Rip. Ripperbon. 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 It's a very uh <laughs> I know. I know. Very touchy but word. they go back and forth with it. So I don't know where they net out if it's I's, A's, or E's, but it's spelled with two E's, Ripperbon. Um and, and this area is kind of like the the free for all party central. It's almost like a New Orleans of sorts. You know, yeah, there's, yeah, there's yeah, bars, yeah. clubs, parties, yeah. all that shit. But what he was talking about is at some point you get to this wall that's blocked off and it says, you know, in German, beyond this point, men only. 18 plus so how did the women get there he, well we did that <laughs> no he means the we, girls working oh, no, that's what I'm oh so they have to, like okay i'm, I'm so george so, george those girls are allowed there okay the men <laughs> from a shopping perspective it's men only right we happen to be with a woman and we couldn't just leave her behind so did you guys dress this woman as a man that's right we did shut the fuck up 
Yeah. Olivia. What O'Brien. happens if you get caught doing that? Is that illegal? Who knows? But I, this is the red light district, so like, is, I have it. Is I, it a lawless city? I have answers for all this. Do you want the real answer? I would love the real answer. So, so prior to very. That's George is looking at a picture of of. Uh, we turned Olivia O'Brien in, into Justin. Justin, I said, "What's your name, man?" Justin. There's Justin. No, there's no way that anybody believed that this woman, <laughs> yeah, with these features, yep, <laughs> yeah, yeah, what she yeah. was a, was an actual woman. So there's she, no way she pulled her hood up, she put a mask on, and and yes, it was a quite feminine Justin. I I, <laughs> I we eventually rolled it back to Justine. <laughs> And we were comfortable calling her Justine at one point, <laughs> but but they but knew the woman knew, bro. Georgie, let me tell you, the woman found out <laughs> in the window. So 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 back to the situation. They open the doors, the windows. They're in front of windows, and they talk to you. Hey, you. I like your show. Like, come here, come here. And by the way, these aren't like your normal, you know, nickel to dime process. These are good looking women, man. Like, these are real, real good looking I heard, girls i heard um in different countries where it is legal these girls look like supermodels they were very beautiful women they weren't supermodels but they were they were hot all right and so uh, but, and another, go, one more no, question. i'm sorry how do you guys is, i'm having a hard time getting through this story because you're just repeating what i said you just keep sure. asking questions Can i just know i'm asking just like it from an audience perspective i know this, this they're asking the same questions how do you sure guys always stumble upon prostitutes <laughs> in every trip you guys take <laughs> it's a good question. Wait, hold on. Nah, he's right. Not for me. Well, I think he's I only stumble upon prostitutes when I'm with him. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> okay, so okay, Don't so try continue to the story. I just wanted to throw that out there because I know there's some people watching this being like, these impulsive guys are, are running to prostitutes. Well, yeah, it, we are in depth on the topic, but, but for his sake and Dottie's sake, long story short, we go in this area and the girl and the girls do find out that Justin is actually Justine. Got it. And uh, I'm like, you know, because we're, by the way, kind of playing into it. Have you met our friend Justin? And they're like, that ain't no girl. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't no girl. She goes, who are you? Who is this bitch? That yes, you yes. They're cussing yes. at her. Whoa, Poor girl. Yeah, really? They got, they they're get, mad. They get mad. They, bro, do you know what they do if they catch a girl on the street? They throw buckets of piss, piss at Piss, urine. Dude. They throw buckets of, yeah, of urine. urine at the girls. There's where the Germany, fuck. Germany. They, first of all, I want to know who assembles the bucket of piss. They collect. It Who's throughout like this morning, day. guys? Come on, just in case Justina comes back. They collect it throughout the day. So that was there are no rules in this place. You don't use toilet. So they can't call the cops. So they 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 just take matters into their own bucket. Yes, that's right. Nice. That was an old tactic when buckets were still used for urine. I don't think they're doing that anymore. But oh, so they're not doing. They didn't throw piss at her. No, no. They no. did call her a beach and. Uh, we and we then left. There was no, by the way, no prostitution was solicited on this trip. There, we, it, there was no closure. It was just exploring the area because it's something that needs to be explored. That's I would all. definitely explore that. And also, I might get a lot of trouble for this, but I've always been curious growing up why prostitution wasn't legal everywhere. Why do they take the rights from women to do what they want with their body? I have a lot of questions about legality on a lot of things. Yeah. You know? yeah. I mean, yeah. And by the way, like, like. I don't like promote it, but I also don't like the fact that they remove things from people. I think if this is for we, weed is the one right now that it, that is boggling to me. The, lega yeah. the legality of weed, yeah, because you know, uh, being from or having lived in California for six seven years, uh, it, it became legal and it, it was so normal, right, for everyone to be smoking like wherever, yeah. And pretty much everywhere else you travel, it, that's just not the case. They look at it like a hard drug. It's it's insane. It's insane to me. Yeah, it's 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 it's. It, I mean, the, bro, the world's just in you know different places um, at different times. It's just yeah. different points of views, which is crazy to me. Bro, it bothers me that, and as it, there's a lot of people, people are still locked up for a very long time for small small amounts um, of weed in America. Possession yeah. of weed. Yeah, it's it, like, it bothers me that they're locked up in states that are not legalized. To me, it's like that's what horrible. The fuck? That's horrible. I don't I, I don't yeah. understand. I might make a, a little play for that eventually. Like Kim K does. Uh, Right, she she she's an advocate. The for leader on it, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah which, she's which, been to the White House, which is oh, oh, she's been to the White House on that topic to try to oh. get people out on crimes that are <laughs> for crimes that Good are for her, bro. Good for her. I'm yeah. actually I I love Kim Kardashian, dude. The fact that she could just be sitting on the fact that she's just pretty and has a lot of money, but she's like actively using her brain to like make the world a better place is dope. absolutely. Absolutely. I think a lot of people sell her short because she does she does do it. No, she's good. a fucking genius, and anybody who ever does not think that you they're just haters. Up. Yeah, they're Good haters. Fun. Yeah. Um, so you guys, that was one one area. So yeah. uh, I heard there was a lava, or like a volcano. This like, was in Iceland. 
Okay, let's talk about Iceland. I have this thing where when I go on trips, especially now when I'm in this like kind of manic state, not kind of. What, no, no, he's definitely in a manic <laughs> state. Like uh, it's hilarious like to I, watch it happen. I don't, <laughs> I don't sleep. I always want to just do stuff. If you, if I cannot be still, I'm pacing every single. The moment I wake up and leave the bed, I'm walking in circles, and so I'm like, we're in Iceland, dude. And the one thing I haven't done yet is hiked a volcano. The only issue was it was two a.m. <laughs> And it was raining, and our flight was the next morning at like seven. So wait, like, hold on. If it's raining, then the the volcano shouldn't be able to like you can't see lava, yeah. It, rain will actually not cancel uh, a volcanic explosion. I'm it, pretty the, sure weather has to do with the. Uh, is it no or not? I, no. What I thought that if like it rains a lot, it like presses it down for a little bit, uh, and then it comes back up. Mm. What do you presses? What I'm not We're a volcano. Lava? What, what do you what? happens when Thinking rain hits? I'm, 1200 degree lava it's not even the heat it's well, more the all, pressure that's a lot isn't that like but water makes it snow all right mm -hmm. i don't know anything about bro, volcano no one's gonna make fun of me who bro, else knows about precipitation you know about you're volcanoes? not that guy pal you'll never oh, be that you know guy i'm bro. stupid there is underwater volcanoes that are stronger than the ones that are on land so i fucked up just so you know i would never make fun of you i didn't think that was i just thought it was a question that was it it's, I think it's you, more of a pressure-based thing. I don't think your rainstorm is going to shut it's down. Not too much pressure. I didn't look, know that much. Look, the rain did not cancel <laughs> the volcanic eruption. If it was in LA, it would the volcanic eruption? <laughs> that was funny. The that was funny. <laughs> the volcanic uh, volcanic eruption canceled it itself. It was dormant. It it, it stopped. <laughs> I, it, it was dormant. It, we knew it. We knew yeah, it. Yeah. It had stopped it flowing. Tracks. It had stopped flowing for two days. <laughs> And we were like, all right, we're gonna, I, I'm, I'm going to give this a shot. So, bro, we show up at this volcano. Long story short, five of us ended up hiking a fucking volcano. With, could, could you name the people so we could paint this with picture? no lava. Yeah, it was Neil, our security guard, who's seven foot, by the way. <laughs> Actually seven foot. Uh, 400 or something. Uh, uh, Viking, our host in Iceland. Uh, uh, Sorel Amor. A, These names a, are fantastic. A travel influencer who I found out was... A travel influencer after the the hike. Same, and I, and I was one, same, and I was wondering why. I was like, it's. I know Danny's a badass because Danny was there and she was hiking with us. But this other girl, Sorel, like no one complained, which was Kevin was there too. That that's it, and me, um, and no one complained, it, bro. And and when I, uh, bro, I, you know, I'm pre I'm pretty hard. Like I can do I can do a hike in the rain, no yeah. problem. But like, definitely wasn't easy. It was a little jaunt. And no one complained, bro. Like, I'm talking freezing cold weather, rain, up a hill in the mud at 4, 5 a.m., bro. How was the pace? Were you guys going fast? Pace was quick because that Viking dude, dude, yo. He was chalking? Yo, watch this dude hike a mountain. Really? I, that's when you know he's from Iceland. Right, it was right. the first time I was like, oh, this is, he's fucking Icelandic, bro. How, how tall are these mountains, by the way? Tall. We ended up hiking four miles. Up? I was very tired. Yeah, yeah, up, yeah. Not 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 uh, steep, you know, like a maybe like a ten degree incline, God, okay, fifteen okay, degree okay, incline. Don't look at me at any point because I was. He, where were you? We knew he couldn't come. <laughs> I was sleeping. He, he was in the I green light district. Yeah. In the green light district, it's a little bit different than the red light district. <laughs> and, and bro, you know what the craziest part was? The reason Danny was there was because we flew her to Iceland with that life size. Charizard. Six foot Charizard costume yeah, yeah. that David Cho made me oh. because we were going to carry it up the volcano and take a picture of it in front of the lava. Genius. Yeah, but it, the volcano wasn't erupting. It was fucking raining. And so. Wait, wait, you guys went up with this thing? No, no, because it wasn't erupting. You got can it, like tell. It, it, we, were, we were going to. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so now just, you just wanted to go just to see it, even if it wasn't. Yeah, that's got it. Okay, saying. cool, cool, cool. And, and, and I guess like a bookend this with saying like it was such a fucking fun experience. And like experiences like that, you 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 really carry with you for when you do the next thing where you're like, oh, this is kind of crazy. Like there's no uh, service up here. It's like I, I like putting myself in uncomfortable scenarios, as you guys know, and I like doing a lot. So I'm prepared for it literally anything and so like i've said it before life isn't short you just got to do more like push yourself to go find parts of yourself that you wouldn't unless you're in a very specific circumstance the more you know yourself i think the better person you can be in this in this world and i, I try to you know discover myself through and through in like experiences like this and especially traveling when you dig deep best. things happen we interrupt this program to bring you a word from our sponsors. It's Blue Chew today. Say it with us. Blue, Blue Chew. Chew. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable form and at a fraction of the cost. Blue Chew's tablets help men achieve harder, stronger erections to combat all forms of ED, erectile dysfunction. Blue Chew is an online prescription service, so no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy, and it ships right to your door in a discreet package. 
The process is simple. Sign up at BlueChew.com, consult one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. The best part? It's all done online. Blue Chew's licensed medical providers work with you to find the right ingredients and strength for your prescription. Uh, so if you can benefit from the extra confidence when it's time to perform, perform visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. Here's a special, de- uh, special detail. It says deal, and I'll say it. We got a special deal for you guys. Try Blue Chew free when you use the promo code Logan to check out. Just pay $5 shipping. That's BlueChew.com. Promo code Logan to receive your first month free. Thank you and Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Reading is hard. <laughs> yeah, even when you don't dig that. like we, It, it wasn't like we're, we're dying, but it wasn't like an easy I hike. heard that. Uh, now, I didn't hear any of this side of the story, but Olivia was like, yo, uh, the security guard was like, this was top five. The worst no, I so I came out the next morning. <laughs> I go I go up to Neil. And and by the way, like the part that le- he's leaving out is hike ended at 530. They all come back soaking wet to the hotel. Flights at seven. Like, like, like go to the airport, <laughs> get your shit, pack your bags in the five seconds you get back to the hotel and go to the airport. So while that's normal for us at our at the pace that we've been running these trips, sometimes what you're asking of these like security uh, protocol like these security teams I, I go up to Neil he's standing out in the pouring rain still <laughs> loading our 800 pound bags into the car after this six hour hike march that that like yes it was exciting for some of the people involved but like let me tell you for the people that didn't want to be there probably was ex- I go dude everybody's so you know I'm waking up after 10 hours of sleeping I go seems like you guys had a great time like everybody's pretty pumped up he goes don't let any of them lie to you. Top five experiences. Top five worst experiences in my life. Top five. I go, he goes, he goes, they're gonna come, he goes, they're gonna come up to you and they're gonna tell you that it was one of the best things they've ever done. It was fucking awful. It was fucking awful, mate, and I'm so jealous that you didn't go. I go, but you saw the lava. He goes, it was this big. We saw no lava. He goes, it was this no fucking lava. big, mate. He goes, he, we hiked up a pitch black, sopping wet mountain. I was in my fucking jeans, mate. I've never been so wet in my life. Top five worst experiences of my life. Sideways, sideways rain, and and he, and he he slipped too. He slipped too. And busted. He goes, I busted my damn knee. And, and this but, is but like, you a, know, like, why did yeah, you need to bring him? Are you tra- no, like, no, no? So that's that's the thing. You. Yeah. Lava beforehand. I said, Neil, just so you know, this is gonna be a little like you know, this is gonna be a thing. Yeah, and you don't have to come. Obviously, oh, so you gave him that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, he goes, mate, I live for this shit. And by the way, I didn't know that because he never told me that and didn't complain. One fucking time. I, I love Neil. Dude, he's the best. He's, he's the, the best in the best. world. If you ever need somebody to protect you, better, hands better. down the best fucking guy if ever. If you ever see anyone important doing anything significant in the UK, Neil is next he's to them. He's there. He's the big guy next to Anthony <laughs> Josh, whoever, right? He's the sharpest you can't, individual. You can't get Uzi, him. Josh, yeah, he's, he's, and, he's and, a shit. And just another note on the uh, him not telling you part. I actually wasn't supposed to tell anybody. <laughs> I was supposed to say that. He was like, mate, don't tell him I said this. No, but he's he's not going to care. But he did. He offered up because here's why. When you're in Iceland and you get that kind of opportunity, this is how he explained it to me. He's like, they gave me an out, mate, and I didn't take it because it's opportunity. I'm in Iceland. It's an opportunity. And 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 did you were there moments on the hike where you felt like you you wanted to give up at all or not? Me For, no. no. You no. no, but I'm sure Danny, no, none of you guys. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I same, I, and I and I knew that. I, I knew there was no lava. I just wanted to hike a fucking mountain while like vibing in Iceland. Those are the ones that that challenge me more than anything. Are the ones that don't have no the, ex, the crazy payoff. Yeah. Like, yo, if we make it to the top of this mountain, we get to see the coolest volcanic eruption. <laughs> like, you're going up that mountain knowing that when you get to the top, you're gonna be let down. There was a point where it was like, are we just walking around aimlessly? And if we are, like, I'm still having fun. Got yeah. it. Got it. Okay. Are we okay. No, I, it, that's 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 where it did get hard. I noticed I definitely hit a wall, yeah. which you know I'd been up for th- fucking two days straight, and like I was like, okay, I'm, I'm dying. Damn, two days up and then hiking. I have I have uh, I have I have two two, two stories yep. that are kind of good. Oh, I, by the way, I'm I really love the direction of this podcast so far. I, 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 oh, these I'm stories fine. are so cool. Good, and if you have any, also please share, Georgie. We haven't heard from you in a while. Are we done with Europe? Is there anything else? I, mean, I was just gonna. I mean, we did the 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 uh, red light district, so now it seems like a strip club story would be a little odd. Yeah. yeah. No. Oh, oh, no, just, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, really? I have a strip club story. Oh, I, okay. Do you have one? Well, all all that happened to me was so 
in between Hamburg and Iceland, we did go to Berlin. We didn't get to experience it. One thing I do understand about this this wild city, the, the capital, is it the capital of Germany? Ah, oh, fuck. Berlin? I don't, I don't know. It, it's a city in Germany. A big city in Germany. They have these ultra clubs that go on all night for like three days straight. I go to this uh, one strip club because I didn't go to the ultra clubs, and it's this place called Golden Dolls. I'm going to give them a free shout out if that's okay or yeah, we can sure. bleep it. Sure. And I walk in. And I s immediately see all these really good looking strippers. And the first girl, the closest of proximity, turns to me and goes, I can't believe you're here. Oh, no, that's that's not the right accent. <laughs> Dude, you do the same I can't believe you're here. <laughs> I watch all of your podcasts. <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> I see all your shows. I watch the night. Now it's done. But she was a fan, bro. And it was a. Uh, and it was and this she, she t said this to him as she was upside down sliding on the pole <laughs> right before the strippers do their famous thunderclap with their heels. They go, they go. And they clapped their heels together, like like a mating call. <laughs> but it was, bro. But it was the first time I ever ended up in a scenario like that where it was like a a, a stripper that was a fan, <laughs> and it, it changed the dynamic incredibly, mm. and not in a good way. Yeah, of course. Kind of you, it, it, it was it was it was weird, bro. So like so like she <laughs> told the boss of the place, and he goes, you know, doors are open. What? <laughs> Whatever you need. Why is everybody you meet angry? <laughs> you know, German German, yeah. with the talk, bro. Whatever you need. So he did she give you her real name? No. So he just started. He put us at the table, started bringing shit out. He's like, any dances you want are are on the house. Anything you want, it's on the house. Okay, we you know we're big fans, blah blah so on and so forth. Hilarious. So I don't know if I told you this, but I go downstairs and for a, for a dance just because it's customary like it's like go get a fucking dance or at this club whatever so i'm getting this dance <laughs> i love the build up to like, make it seem okay we're here it's customary it's customary i don't want to be disrespectful you said it's the... free so i got five of them on me i didn't want to be rude so i got all the girls back in my corner no so i bring the fan one Such down there and she goes um you know i i've been following you and you know you i was a, a huge fan of your ex-girlfriend as well and she was so pretty and it, she started dancing and she, it threw the dynamic off because she told me that she didn't feel pretty enough because of who my ex was. Oh my God. Leave that shit at home. I, bro, I Leave it at I immediately home. Was like, <laughs> We're all working here. I immediately this was like, yeah, this is over. Like, let's just go back upstairs. And we just, and it was <laughs> so, so awkward. No. It was bad. It was, I was like, yo, poor you're- girl, this poor girl. Ugh. Oh, that's sad, bro. I would have done this. I would have called that off. It was weird. I did. That affected me. That would have. I would. That affected me. What's that your strip? What's your strip club? Sorry. I was, thought you were gonna say what's my stripper name. Which, by the way, I think we should do really quick. Okay. Middle middle name street you grew up on. Um, my, Woodridge. Jo what what? My street. Is Ed Edward Woodridge. Woodridge. What's Edward Woodridge? Is, isn't your middle name Edward? Emmanuel. Emmanuel Woodridge. <sighs> what's your up? middle name? Emmanuel Woodridge. <laughs> Now coming Wait, to the yeah, stage, Emmanuel Woodridge. I threw my thunderclap. <laughs> <laughs> is that? I don't know why, but that's kind of a hot name. Yeah, you're Emmanuel kind of hot. Woodridge. Yeah, yeah, you're kind of hot. That's the wood has rage. <sighs> so what's your guys? Is don't leave me here. Law, the law, the fuck, fuck! I didn't even want to do this. Lawrence. They made me say shit, and then they just sat there quietly. Lauren Sawmill. That sounds right. Lauren Sawmill. Yeah, my mom. Lauren? <laughs> you it's have Lauren. A, she the, was a big fan of Ralph Lauren. Lauren. Your middle name is Lauren? <laughs> Lauren? I'm not calling you Mike anymore. Lauren? Lauren. It's Lauren. Lauren. Yeah, Thank yeah. you, Jeff. Yeah, it's whatever, French. Yeah, whatever you say, Jeff. Oh, it, 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 it's my middle name, too. You're, well, you're a girl. Yeah, but it's fun. It's fine. It's 2021. You could be Lauren. <laughs> she said, yeah, it's fun. That's fire. What's yours? <laughs> Alexander Bradley. Oh, that's well, That's good. cooler than your real name. That's good. Alexander Bradley, dude, that would have been my name. I would have changed that shit to that. Just yesterday, I was in Oregon, visiting Oregon, and <laughs> I ended up at a strip club in the middle of fucking Oregon. You guys know where that place is? Of course you don't. Isn't it a big, relatively big uh, city? It, it's actually incredible. Right, yeah, right. It's actually, I, we had we had probably one of the most fun 24 hours of my life and i wasn't there by the way and i didn't drag you because it was supposed to be it was supposed to be a quick jaunt and right, right. you know we we had heard that there was a, we, we wanted drinks at like 11 p.m and nowhere was open except the strip club so we walked to the strip club yep walked the, down the street it's oregon and uh we go in there and 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 everything's all good i i had some cash on me so i i, I withdrew three thousand dollars in singles 
right? And just it started just handing them to the patrons, and I'm just like, here, like throw this money, like let's like like these girls gonna work tonight, and we gonna make sure they get paid, right? You know? right, right. right? Like, it was fun. It was the first. If I, mind you, you know how I feel about strip clubs. I fucking yeah, hate. Like I get uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah, I can't yeah. be there. Whatever. But I was like, I was having fun. We're in Oregon doing whatever, and uh, so I have this brick of cash under my arm. I'm in this Oregon strip club, and like I, I don't know how to say this without coming off pretentious, but uh, when I often find when I go to um, like middle America or flyover states, sometimes the uh, like etiquette for filming me is a bit uh, less, uh, I think, appropriate than usual. I.e., I'm sitting at a strip club <laughs> with a fucking brick of cash under my arm and some dude comes and puts his camera in my face. Nah, nah, nah. At an Oregon strip club. Right. Fam, I have a broken hand. I'm, I'm at a strip club in Oregon. I, like I'll talk about it, but fucking, I don't want y'all to see that. Like, get this shit, get your fucking phone out of my face. One good hand, the classic. Sink snatches phone. I have it now. I have the video. He's like, bro, give me my phone. I go, bro, you just took a fucking video of me in, in my face at a strip club. Do not think that's weird. He goes, bro, give me my phone. So I go in, I delete it. Thank God his phone was unlocked, so I go to recently delete it. And and mind you, the 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 dynamic of this is weird because like, <laughs> I have. One hand that I'm currently using to delete the video on his phone. I'm defenseless, right? And so I don't know if this guy, Kevin's standing right there, and we, we, we don't really we don't have a crew. We don't have, like, people. She's like, bro, give me my phone. I go, fam. And now, now, now I set the brick down because I'm like, now I'm getting angry. This guy needs to shut the fuck up and get out of my face. <laughs> uh, and, and so I set the brick down, and, and I, I sense that, like, thing coming. I yeah. go, I go, bro. You just took a video of a stranger in a strip club. Do you not think that's weird? He goes, no, no, it's cool, man. I go, you just took a video of a strip club, of a stranger in a strip club. Do you not think that's weird? He goes, no, bro, I swear it's cool. I go, no, I'm telling you it's not cool. I'm telling you right fucking now it's not cool. He goes, no, please, please, just. I go, bro, admit to me right now that it's weird to take a video of a stranger in a strip club. He goes, well. Now they mention it, mate. He goes, you know, yeah. no, no, seriously. He had a moment of like, like to him, it's it, like he just discovered the, the, uh, the cure to cancer. He's like, gravity. Well, yeah, I guess it is a little weird. <laughs> I guess that is a little weird. I go, yeah, it fucking is. <laughs> now take this stack, go throw it at the strippers and get a Let's shot with go. me. Nice. <laughs> That's so, how you handle so it. So we took a shot. We threw the money and it was great. But like. I guess I was just so stunned. Like, I don't know if he was in shock that I was like pressing him a little bit and maybe he just kind of panicked, but like, but yeah, yeah. Th so that's, that's why I say that it's, it's uncommon. I don't know. Like a person with like a following in Bend, Oregon at a strip club is probably not too common. And I'm assuming that's <laughs> where. <laughs> Can you tell me what he, my, my favorite is knowing what they say when the phone's in your food. Cause my, my guess is, uh, can I take a stab at sure. it? Yo, it's Logan Paul. <laughs> No, nothing. No, nothing. It, he wasn't like a. Uh, no, he wasn't. It, there was nothing. It was just like that. And I go. He goes. Whoa, what the? F I go. Bro, you just took a fucking video of me. Yeah. Right now, you think that's weird? Come huh? on, mate. Give me my phone back. No, this was in Oregon. Yeah, but they're all British. <laughs> <laughs> if you ask me, any reaction is British, dude. And uh, I said, yeah, that was cool. We went to a dick museum in Iceland. I can't believe it, dude. It was the first time in my life I was like, dude, I'm not the only per person who thinks penises are fascinating. <laughs> There's an entire museum dedicated to cock in, they tried in Iceland. To, they, tried in Reykjavik. To, they tried to spice it up by calling it the Reykjavik Phallological Museum. Yeah, they try to make it like scientific. It's a dick. It's it's the dick museum. It's you a go, museum of cocks. You, you go there to look at penis. There's no other way around it. So it's just like different styles? No, everything. It's different species. Different. There's it, From what I understand. So that literally would be different strokes for different folks. I love that for Dude, us. Dude, there are wieners in jars like pickles like floating in some sort of like formaldehyde or something that preserves the integrity of the of the um the, the cock do they say whose it is yeah yeah hilarious but it's but it's like elephants or some interplanetary dicks. oh dude i'm fucked up <laughs> i literally thought it was only humans are were there any human cocks in there it was yeah there's a couple <laughs> i know but in my mind i just pictured a bunch of human dicks that's a no, weird no, thing there, to are a there are a few there are a few <laughs> i'm gonna i need somebody to pull that out of context what george just said and post it on twitter please in my mind i pictured a bunch of human dicks <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, fucking stupid. Oh shit. Oh my god, it's hilarious. Um uh, okay. <laughs> we gotta get out of the dick. So if you somehow. were trying to look for a dick there, it would be literally I'm trying to, never I mean, these jokes are not gonna fly. What about the what about the topic we were we were popping off about pre show? 
It's it, it's sensitive. Yeah, it's, it's a yeah, little sad. Yeah. I, think it's, I, think, I don't think there's any way around thinking about it. Um, what have you been up to, Georgie? We haven't seen you. Uh, just practicing the craft. Yep. Um, I ha- I actually do have a funny story. Go so uh, I went to Vegas to open up for Joe Coy. Amazing. And I, you know, like still like it's we're kind of like on this basis where I don't ask, you know, but if you say let's do it, I'm there. I'm trying to hone in these skills and craft. Uh, I get there and he's like, uh, "Yo, you're not performing tonight." And I was like, "Oh no, I thought I did something wrong." Uh, but it was because we they had a special guest, Tiffany Haddish, and she came, bro, and blew the fucking oh, house sure, off, yeah. right? So I'm like, oh, shit, like, this is great. Uh, and then I'm like, but tomorrow... Uh, so I went to dinner with them, by the way, right? So I'm still in the, like, the phase of, like, you know, like, hey, I'm still here. Like, I'm going to be here. <laughs> yeah. And uh, making them laugh. And then yesterday, uh, the, the next day, we go on these, the Razor things. Bro, and I'm with... I just got introduced to the gentleman who runs the Laugh Factory. And, and if you guys don't know what that is, that is, like... Dude, if you're trying to be a, like a comedian, like that is, the everybody spot. started there. Everybody started right, there. Right, 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 right. He's in my razor. Me and Batch are racing, and I'm like head to head. I'm doing the one thing my dad told me: don't fucking do when you're in this shit. Don't be right here because you can't see the ground, and if you hit a rock, you'll flip. Hard cut, we flip, <laughs> pop, and I'm with the dude, and I'm like, oh my god. So we're over. I'm like, it can't get worse. Then the gas thing pops. And just the whole gasoline is being poured what? on this man. I was like, there goes my career. I'm never doing stand up ever yeah, again. Yeah, you incinerated the guy with the keys to your future. Yes. You incinerated Mr. Miyagi. You're Mr. Miyagi. <laughs> Bro, so I was like, this can't fucking get worse than this. Oh, it can. Someone threw a match. <laughs> <laughs> it could definitely get worse, brother. <laughs> <laughs> it could get worse. Short story, uh, Batch and, and, and Joe have to come back to get us because we can't lift this shit. So like, so now I'm embarrassed. They're laughing, they're recording and, and making fun of me. And I'm like, ah, yeah, I'm so stupid. Like, just like, <laughs> there's nothing I could do here. That in the midst of them making fun of me, they're all laughing. They're like, dude, come and perform tonight at the win. And I'm like, bet. Oh, in Vegas? Yeah, it's my oh, first wow. theater event. Yeah. There's over a thousand people. Uh... And I'm confident, bro, because every time I performed so far, I've been really impressing a lot of big people. Like, I'm not going to name drop, but a lot of sure. people have reached out and they're sure. like, yo, I want you to perform at my show. I want you to do this. So I'm very excited. And I, and I think I'm about to fuck this day up, bro. Like, I'm about to kill it, right? I have my jokes. I know what I'm doing. I have the energy. I get on. Nobody. No, and by the way, I made it very clear that this is my first theater performance. I'm excited. I'm backstage. It's my first theater. Th- 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 so my first joke I have this thing where I grab my phone and dude, every time I do this joke, it crushes, brings the house down. And that's what I open up with to let people know like I'm funny and I go in. Nobody tells me, Mike, that the theater is designed so you can't hear the audience. What? Oh, that's horrible. Bro, bop, tell my joke. <laughs> it, they're like muffled. Bro, it like blew a shotgun through my chest. How did it feel? How did, did you feel like anxiety? Like just, I, I swear to God, Mike, I, I was so frozen up in that moment that I wanted to just put my mic back and just walk off stage. Like, so I'm like, oh my God. And mind you, bro, we have the biggest comics watching me right now backstage. And I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Like, this is it. Again, my career's done. But then something I, d- I dug deep, I was like, yo, if I'm going to bomb for the first time, I'm just going to just do Keep it. Keep going, yeah. So I performed this shit as if I'm killing it, dude. Thank God. So I come off stage and they're like, yo, you did great. And I thought they're making fun of me. And I was like, fuck you guys. And I was like, no one laughed. They're like, what are you talking about? And Reed hands me my phone and I could hear people laughing. Oh, shit. I was like, oh, thank God. So if it really wasn't for me being like, fuck it, I'm just going to just drown in this, then I, I would have fucked up my whole like life in this situation. I think, I think that's a lesson I'm sure you can kind of repeat it as well. It's like you need to get comfortable in your life if, if you're watching this and you're putting crafts out there or, or you're in any kind of uh, space. You need to get comfortable in life delivering what you believe to be your best work and then being ag- semi-agnostic to what the initial reaction to it is. I've mastered it. Uh, you're amazing I, I'm, at it. I'm the best at it. Yeah. I work on a project for two and a half, three years. I've done it twice. At the completion of the project, after literally tens of thousands of hours of working on something that is so near and dear to me and has become a part of my life, twice now I've gone, I hate that. I hate it. I'm not going to do it. Wow. Oh, and walking I, I, away without wa- without walking got away. It, got it. Get I, it happened with, to me with music, bro. Right, right, I right. I really, really, really tried to make good music. A lot of time, a lot of production, traveling to everything. You made a recording studio yeah, in your house. In your recording house, studio yeah. in my yeah. house. H- hundreds of hours writing, recording music, vocal lessons every single day. No, sorry. Twice a week, 
for every single week for two years. I was there when you uh, when you were like, you know what, this isn't it. You were showing me a song, and you were literally like, I'm done with this. And I was like, oh. yeah, because I realized it's just, it's just like it's not me. I'm way, I, for some reason I just don't tick in that. But being agnostic to your work and unbiased to what you've created, I think could help so many. You have to put good people around so you to be honest. Many people, exactly, exactly. And, not, like, and like I run. By the way, I run as you guys know. All my creation, ev- by, tactically, by every everything. every yeah, one yeah, of yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. You, you, you know, and we do the same. I think we kind of all learned how to do that. This you, is we, did it, we did it last night. You, yep. you, you, I literally you did, you I wrote a joke. A joke. Uh, I've been working on this joke for uh, a good a good few weeks, and I pitched it to Logan. Logan's like, "Yeah, I liked like maybe six percent of that." He's like, "Get rid of it." <laughs> I was like, "Sick." Okay, move on. <laughs> uh, but no, so the stand up thing uh, is really cool. I'm in a great place. Uh, this is a guy named Enrique who's running the Laugh Factory. He's introduced me to everybody in the industry, and I'm talking about people I look up to, and uh, they're just sitting down one on one, and I'm just asking them questions, and they're just giving it to me. So I'm on this fast track to learn. Uh, I'm getting offered to do really big shows right now, and I'm respectfully declining just because I really want to master this craft. One, I know people are gonna. Uh, look harder on me because I came from the social media they world. Will. Yeah, and two, I don't want to disrespect any comics because they had a really dude to be a comic and to be a successful comic. They had to be shitted on and worked and beat to just get one thing that I'm basically getting for free. Yeah, yeah. So as respect to the community, I'm like I reject offers and I'm sitting here working on the craft and I'm gonna be there when I'm ready. Your head's in the perfect spot. Yeah, it's fucking fantastic. I appreciate it's, that. It's sort of taking a page from. Uh, Thor's book in Iceland. I don't, I don't know if you saw the podcast. You definitely didn't see the podcast. You don't watch shit. No, unless I'm on it, I don't watch. Yeah, it. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, <laughs> but but I, I I commended him for his ability to like dedicate himself to a craft and then come out as the best. Like I I think you should for like two to three years, dude. Not underground, but don't go crazy, bro. Like yeah, master that mm-hmm. skill before the world sees you for the first time. I think that's really strong. <laughs> I I admit it to everybody and to the people that I look up to. I say I'm gonna be the greatest comedian in the world. And I go, not yet. I, I'm gonna have a, maybe it's gonna take me forever, but I will become one of the greatest comedians in the world. Manifestation. I love I have it. to be. This is like, dude, when I was on stage and I realized this is my baby, I was like, fuck. Like, I will give up everything for this. Like, literally Even everything. Even an impulsive for this. podcast? Everything. So at the beginning of this one, I did go to Twitter. We were looking for some topical shit. Um, I, got a, I got a few here. You wanna try to rapid fire sure, some of this? Sure. Uh, you met Drake. Oh my God! How did I you know. not? Oh my God! Kind of, what? Kind of How did you not talk about what that? What the fuck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What the fuck? You're welcome. <laughs> oh my God! I did. What the fuck? But I had met him before, which is why uh, it wasn't as like f- driving for you. No, no, no. Like, it, 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 it was. Yeah, it was driving. Drake. Right after C L. Right after C L B drops. Yeah, he, he, it's like peak Drake, dude. I got I got a f- photo with peak Drake. Yep. When Drake's peaking. Yep. And, Drake's and, Drake's uh, like so goaded that like just. I went to his house and he wasn't even there. And people were congratulating me, bro. Like, what the <laughs> fuck, <laughs> bro? Like, just to meet him anywhere. And okay, so I heard the story, but yeah, this is pretty cool. I, I actually don't want to tell the story. Yeah, it, don't tell it, us not it. that. Cool. It's a. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna save it Thought, for thoughts on uh, the uh, uh, tattoo for Woodley. Oh, oh my, my god, god, bro! I'm just gonna Woodley, keep this. I'm Tyron exactly. Woodley got the I love Jake Paul tattoo. I actually. Can't fucking believe it, bro. I can't. I know why because of his placement. Obviously, he did. it's it's weird. He put I and then loved uh, in a forty five degree angle, and then Jake Paul and actually like cool font. Like if he was gonna do it, I think he, he jokes right. aside, I think he did it right because it's also the way he structured it and, and intentionally. Uh, he's gonna cover it up with some shit. Uh, he, it, whether it's it's uh, the easiest removal place. Oh, is he, it? He, yep. he, uh, okay. It seems like is he doing it because he wants a rematch? Yeah. No, yeah, he I, just did it because he loves Jake. He, he really fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> he I mean, really lo- he got a, he got he lost a fight. He was sitting at home one day. And he's like, you know what? I fucking well, love Jake. Well, I didn't know if he did it because he was trying to keep his word. You know what I'm well, saying? Well, his or word if- was that the loser gets the tattoo. Like that's the, the bet's over. F- rematch or not? Like who gives a fuck? Like he, he you know, uh, if I were Jake, no, no, I don't he know. wanted the rematch. That's why he posted it with the if him saying, if I get it, what you do? He goes bet. Yeah, but that's the second part of a deal that was already done. That's my issue with it. You can't make a second bet as like a because the first bet was whoever loses gets an I love blank tattoo. That's the bet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what oh, was that's right. what was fulfilled. You're right, you're right. And then so Tyron tried to word. Ty, Tyron tried to be like, Well, now I'll get a rematch too. Nah, bitch, you fucking lost the bet and you actually got a a fucking tattoo. A grown ass man has a tattoo on his finger. Hey, I'm that says I love Jake Paul. Who bro? Hey, I think a lot of people are I think a lot of people are here for that rematch. Including Dave Chappelle. 
I'm <laughs> Dave Chappelle is, but uh, but I'm uh, very here for that. Li- literally, that was, and by the way, and by the way, bro. listen, Jake, Jake's doing everything right. Everything he's doing is is uh, business first and career first. Never been as confident in the fucking kid as I am right now. Doesn't need any advice. Doesn't need any help. Like he he is trucking and crushing it, and it's amazing to watch. But I I, I think. I think more people than he might think are here for that. Re- I think that rematch gets a, a lot of buys, and I would I would certainly watch it. Uh, Diaz in the octagon. Nick Diaz, yeah, returned to the octagon to fight Robbie Lawler. I think for the their second time in, in, in seventeen years. S- in tw- I think it was twenty six years. No, 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 no. No, he hasn't. F- no, Nick Diaz has not fought in over twenty six years. That that is. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you. Fuck you. No, that's facts. <laughs> no, nah, it was it was really it was really entertaining. Like uh I, I I do have to give props to uh Nick Diaz because taking that kind of time off and like God knows what he's doing to his body because if it were me, I'd probably be drinking and smoking, hanging out with my friends, kicking my feet up, playing he some video games. Good <laughs> he came out with that Stockton energy, yeah. bro. Like bro, the roundhouse. The, bro, the, he, he tried to pull the Masvidal right bro, up the that road. was the funniest <laughs> thing. I was like, what the fuck? It was the, that card was great, dude. Uh, uh, Shevchenko doing her little spins after she wins. She, she's, a, she's, she's a Russian killer. She's a beast. Congratulations to her. She's, she's like, her and, her and Nunez are the ones to beat right now. Um, and then, uh, dude, Brian Ortega the greatest and fight. Alexander yeah, Volkanovsky. Yeah, one of the greatest. One of the greatest fights yeah. I've ever seen. Dark. I can't believe how many times we jumped up out of our seats. Like we were literally like, yeah. I felt like I was ringside. That was the craziest fight I've ever seen in my life. The one round where Volkanovski slipped out of two like fight-ending submissions, tight, cinched. Brian in his post-fight interview said he heard him gargling. <laughs> he goes, "The little bastard's tough." He slipped. I heard him gargling and shit. Dude, he's 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 such a good fighter and like entertainer. In general, I think because like he really has given his heart, soul, and life to his craft. Like you see how he ended the fight, bro. His he gave it his all, dude. Like that was a, that was a fight with two warriors. And Volkanovski's like one of the best in class right now. And I knew this was gonna be a hard fight for Brian because he's just he's a, he's like a little fucking invincible little spark plug from from Australia, mind you. Australia, Australia. Probably should have hit Tommy Fury when we were back on the topic, but obviously there's a lot going on there. Didn't pay his bar tab. I actually don't think there is. Maybe I, not. I think I think I think Tommy Fury is a little bit of a a little bit of um. I'd say go ahead and just say it. I, like a little bit of a like a dunce, if, if you will. It's kind of like a kind of like a fucking dweeb, <laughs> that, that whole situation. A dweeb in a, like a hot guy's body. That whole situation was weird to he's me. A like Jake, Jake, he's so yeah, good looking. He's he's good he should, he should I met him at, a, at the airport, and I went up to the t- like say hi to him, and he looked at me like yeah. I had beef with him, and I was like, bro, I don't, no, I he's, wait, he's, where'd you see him? At the airport, back Which, the day that he fought. God, he's he's breathtaking. It. Did his <laughs> eyes, did his eyes freeze you where you were? I had my girlfriend wait at the gate. I was like, go over there. <laughs> yeah, of course. Go but but that whole situation seems a little odd to me. Like the the once again, Jake being on top of his shit and saying everything that was right to say. Dog, the offer is the offer because of Jake. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, do you, he, that, what does his offer look like without a Jake deal? No, it's your life. Your life's over, bro. Like, he did. He did. He did. It's it's a, it's all it's all a game. It's a little bit of a back and forth and ebb and flow. The is, got it. Got the it. issue. The issue is, dude. Like, similar to Dennis, like Tommy and I'm Jake's brother, and he means this. Like, you're gonna get left in the dust. This is your moment. Take take it. He's gone. You you're like this is it. You're only gonna get to fight Jake Paul once, because who knows. Even how he's how long he wants to be doing this, bro? Does he want another one fight, two fights, three fights? He's gonna take a break, like. And it's a big, it's a big moment for him. I mean, dude, like, think about it. If if in some crazy world he was able to fucking pull, he's got a catapult for the rest of like he could make his money with brands and all that stuff. He's just this is where people that have greed in their heart will lose. Yeah. If, if yeah. you think about money first, like, dude, I. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You got a. Um, lo- uh, you know what it is? To me, it's like, yo, if he's getting that cash. That it's minimal. Maybe in his mind, he's like, "Yo, I don't want to get my ass beat for a little paycheck." Think about that. What but you that's mean? A big one, what you bro. mean minimal, bro? Yeah, he got a, a million pay- plus. Yeah, a million bucks. Like, he's never even made close. To it. He didn't pay his fucking bar tab, dude. <laughs> like this guy. Hey, on that topic, I do got to jump money. in for one sec. And and by the way, maybe that's true. But we've probably had nights where we're like, "Shit, dude, I can't go talk to the fucking lady." Let me tell you something. <laughs> Let me tell you something, bro. <laughs> he paid it the next day. Let me I'm tell you. Wish. You know, I mean, fuck. Let me tell you something. I'm sure it got paid. But like then, why wasn't it reflected in the article? That's something. Right, right, that's something. Right, right, if you, right, if right. you have a PR team update or whatever they do, amendment, edit. Tommy Fury paid bar tab next. No, 
He doesn't have a PR team. He doesn't have anything. He's just, he's just a good looking guy who's the younger brother of a, the greatest heavyweight ever. <laughs> huh? Fury. Oh, Joshua. Joshua. Oh, yeah. Was, Joshua. Anthony dude. Joshua. That's, that's oh, huge, man. Box. That is. No box, I, yeah. I can't believe that. I wasn't expecting that, to be honest. You knew it? I just, I, I knew that it was going to be a good fight. And Joshua's just also a technical boxer. He's not like Tito. Like, lost to Ruiz. Like, like, the, fight, the, fight, the fight game's exciting right now, dude. The fight game is spicy. The other day, bro, I went from boxing to MMA to some drama offline. I was like, this is fantastic. Oh, let's do that because we just did boxing and MMA. Let's do the drama. You got a girlfriend? Me, no. Because I've been seeing, there's been some shit heating up. I don't know if to get into <laughs> it, but it's been a little bit of chirping back and forth. I'm sure the, uh, what's this, Crack Axe, you know, the, the group chat, the Maverick group chat? Mm. Sure, they're talking about it. You got any, you know anything about any of that shit? So, no, it just sounds like something I have no interest in. Um, crypto NFTs. I mean, there's a lot. Stop! Here. Stop! Yep. I'm so bullish on NFTs. Stupid bullish. I especially now, like I've literally devoted my life to this shit. Like literally 100. Because like when I, the more I got into the space, the more I realized the practical application of NFTs will 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 make this like a mainstay in culture uh everyone has an idea of what nfts are but i think when it really sinks in exactly what it is um the hold that it will have in your everyday life will be undeniable and, and no one's going to be able to ignore it uh, I, and, I and, and, and a couple projects that I, I pointed out you know four months ago actually i'm gonna be honest all of them uh are taking off um, especially, bro, talked about it before. World of women, world of women, it's man. Awful. It's it's like it's so cool to see the tide changing in a way, and people people now kind of seeing the the significant projects, and and, and like, dude, you, I I have to I have to feel proud when I when I was right about uh, like a pick. It, it, it lets me know my head is in the right space. And I I do kind of understand the space a little bit. But uh, I, I just want to hit on NFTs real quick, for, just again, because I, I, I believe they'll be a part of everyone's life eventually. But um, for those of you who uh, maybe don't know what they are, I'm going to say it in a different way. Download this. Uh, NFTs are, are, are nothing more uh, than uh, verification, verifiable ownership. So like you own your house, right, George? Yep. Why? Uh, cause I need a place to live. No. Why do you own a house? Why do you, why do you own your house? And why do we all acknowledge that you own that house? Uh, why do we all acknowledge that I own 84 acres? In better Mount investment Center? strategy than renting for some people. Some people want to feel the ownership for me personally. It's a business move. People, humans want to own things. Well, that we've talked about that. In the I'm past. saying why you have the answer is you have a deed. There's something that says you own this house. We all acknowledge that to be true. That exists in the physical world, whether it's a receipt, a deed, uh, a certification, whatever. Up until uh, NFTs on the blockchain, verification of digital assets wasn't really commonplace, right? Like it's it's nothing more than being able to say like, "Hey, I own this," and for that reason alone. And I think if you start looking at it through that lens, not like a oh, here's a here's a an eight bit cartoon called a, a you know a crypto punk, uh, because these are collectibles and it's cool. And it's where the space is at now, but just like any other industry, like there's ev evolution that's going to take place. It's going to evolve, and the word I'll use is it's going to mature. And eventually, these collectibles, these cartoons, these NFTs that you know most people think are like the pudgy pang of the bored apes, they're cool, and they were the catalyst and the first thing to like uh, launch and and make the space uh, mainstream. But eventually, it will mature. I believe next up is generative art. Art created by code or algorithm. Well, and that's by the, what we, have, the, that's the way, we have now. Right? It's already happening. So, like, yeah, Fidenzas and there's some other ones that are like big. And I, to be honest, I actually don't know much about generative art. I'm still kind of stuck in. I thought, I thought the apes were. Crypt, a, apes yeah, are not, not gener, are you, generative art. I thought they put characteristics. Yeah, I thought a lot there, of. There are characteristics, but an artist made them and it. And, Each one, and, and, they're all and, individually and crafted? I, I don't know. But that's not what I'm talking about with generative so, art. So, I, some of I, some of them, uh, some of those projects that are like own one, I don't know if own one is, but a lot, some of those, they co they program a code and they generatively create it's, it's those not, pieces. It's not, it's not, it's not what I mean. Got it, got it, got it. Truthfully, I'd like to 
do more research Got on this before okay, I speak okay, on it. Okay, but okay. I, generative art, it, it, art created by code and algorithm right, right. solely, um, I think is next. And then, uh, uh, and then one of one art. I believe will be the final evolution and maturity, like like real like real art, like you know what I'm saying, like uh, uh, individualized pieces, one of one artists taking time to create this thing that will have everlasting, eternal value in the digital space, and and it's just a a, a maturity that the, the the space has to has to go through. To your, to it makes it safer to keep that item too. Like say, for example, if it's on the internet and like you have paintings in your house that are electronic, if your house burns down, you're you're not going to lose your assets. Let me tell you something. I was in Orlando, and I was in this hotel, and I'm walking by a really nice hotel, bro. Beautiful art on the wall. Big pieces, like even Kevin. Kevin took a picture of it, and I took a picture of this one piece. And we were like, "Yo, this, did you see that? It's cool." And I had to stop. I was like, "Why do I have to be in fucking Orlando, Florida, to be able to enjoy and admire this art?" And in the digital world, with NFTs, if digital displays become mainstay and everyone has them in their household, you can put your art anywhere in the world on any display like this and i don't have to be in this random hotel in orlando to enjoy a piece of work that someone spent a lot of time on it, it, the 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 um uh, ubiquitous nature of nfts among many things is also very exciting for me i could i could talk about this forever i, I get, think, did i answer that twitter yeah, question yeah yeah you did I th and, and and by the way just just quickly to touch on i think where you started was actually higher level than where you ended yeah which was yeah, yeah. Your, which was which was i think where the the true future of it is bridging the gap between what currently exists watermarks to claim your art online to a true way of oh, do you know what i'm saying so i think i think the big win ends up being commercial ownership uh programming so it's like it's like getty images your watermark is useless bro like somebody's gonna cr crop that out and and by the way like even if they don't like who who really traces back that ownership I think commercial ownership is a pro like commercial digital ownership will be a problem solved by NFTs for 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 things that are in demand. That's the only asterisk I'd I'd, I'd add to that because like, who, who? Yeah, maybe, but like, but even like as far as memes are concerned, like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, you you produce a meme, no, and, and a meme that ends up getting seven hundred billion impressions, so, side eyes, so, the girl standing in front of the burning building. So, Imagine being able to say, "Yo, that's mine. I created that." And there's a and there's a blockchain receipt that points to it. So yeah, but you're still operating in collectible land. That's what I'm saying. That's like the most basic. Well, hold on a sec. That's to say that the importance of a one in one designed piece of artwork has more importance than the most valuable meme on the internet. That's exactly what I'm saying. And I think there's a lot of people that argue that. I'm not one of them. But I think 2021, your meme in 2021 in 10 years will be the dumbest fucking uh, thing. You Charlie have. bit my finger. We, it, it's cute, dude. But is it, it has, does that mean but it anything has, to you? But it has, and by the way, I'm arguing a non buy side. I don't have a side. Yeah, no, but I, just, I think, yeah. but I, but I think, uh, I think there are people out there who would argue that culturally, um, for example, right now, the biggest thing would be imagine owning an ape or an alien, right? There mm. are people out there that are like, yo, if you can give me ownership of Charlie bit my finger, bit my finger or, I'm, or I'm one saying, of those, I'm it saying, far outweighs. I'm saying no, because the demand for that video is so much less than a, in a zombie. Right now. Ape. But it's stood the test of time. Like if you ask no, anybody, hasn't. if you ask anybody like, what is the video from YouTube history? You know what I'm saying? I, like I probably would have said the same thing. A lot of people would say that. But who cares? But it's, like it's in five years, all... in five years, you may ask you, what is the collectible uh, crypto punk? And... It's a zombie. Or that's why, that's why there's a, there's a, there's a group of people who all think the same thing and, and value the same but election. it's a silo comparatively to the massive audience of of YouTube. You know what I'm saying? Like it's a tiny little silo. So so how do you provide true value? Is it is it is it that tiny silo? No, it, there needs to. I'm telling you, there, this is it. There just needs to be demand. I, my assumption got is it, this, and I could it, be wrong. It. Is well, somebody did buy. Uh, yes. has they've been buying those memes as yeah. NFTs. And, 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 I, and now I, at what value? I, I think they'll. I think they'll turn out to be a bad purchase. Got it. Is, it's got my it, guess. Got it. Got it. Got it. Um, is our next guest here? By the way, no, he, or, he's he's running a little late. He is. Okay. What, what else? Is there? There's um, pl pl plenty of stuff. Uh, sorry, I was I was. He is oh, here. he is here. And by, by by the way, if you're watching this episode of Impulsive, uh, do you have thoughts on this topical uh discussion that we just had? I know there's uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, should we middle show it, beginning of show it on these boys only episodes? Run through a bunch of topics, rapid oh. fire. How do you guys feel about it? Let us know in the comments. Do, do you have anything else? I mean, if he's here, I mean, I don't have anything substantial. All right. 
fuck it. That's it, guys. That's all we got. Hit that subscribe button. Uh, thank you for listening to Impulse, the number one podcast in the world. We're going to keep attempting to find random locations in the world to, to shoot these episodes. Trying is lying. We're going to. We're going to. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's important to us um, while we get the studio set up in Puerto Rico. Till then, appreciate you. Love you. Bye.